Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk all about how to prevent a scar after surgery. But before getting into the topic, be sure you give this video a thumbs up if you like skincare information from a board certified dermatologist. Be sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications on so YouTube will let you know as soon as my videos go live. Now, when it comes to preventing post-operative scars, there are a lot of different factors that go into play, which we're gonna get into in this video. But the name of the game when it comes to scar prevention is tension. You wanna do everything possible to minimize tension on the healing wound in order to get the best outcome possible in terms of final scar appearance. Even when your skin looks completely closed together, there's still a lot of healing going on underneath. Keep that in mind, whether it be a surgery to remove a skin cancer on your face or something from another body site, the name of the game is always to minimize tension on the healing wound. If you imagine your body and how your skin is draped over your skeleton, it's got to be flexible and strong. It's got to stretch and have elasticity to it. They're natural folds and creases, and your body has what are called relaxed skin tension lines and Langer's lines. And the surgeon takes those into account when planning the orientation of the incision and how ultimately your skin is gonna to come together to end up giving you the best results. Tension is not uniform throughout your body. You have high tension areas and you have relatively low tension areas. Areas of the body where there is a lot of tension are the areas that are most prone to healing with thickened, raised, hypertrophic scars or keloids. For example, your shoulder, there is a lot of tension here. Whereas other areas where you have skin folds, a lot less tension there less likely to heal with thick and raised scars. Incision design is key. Improper incision design is probably a very common reason for a hypertrophic thick and raised scar. That's nothing that you can do, that is on the part of the surgeon. The reason tension matters so much is that if you put a lot of tension on a wound, your body is gonna try and make more collagen to keep things together as the skin is being stretched apart. In order to make a scar that lies flat and looks good, a surgeon is gonna plan the incision to cut out skin in the shape of a foot ball or an ellipse rather than a circle. If you can imagine, if you just cut out a circle of skin, it's very difficult to bring that together under minimal tension. If you're going to undergo a surgery to remove, say, a skin cancer, one thing you have to bear in mind as a patient is that your final scar is going to be a lot longer than the diameter of the initial spot or lesion on your face, for example. When it comes to proper wound healing and getting the best scar, a lot of it's going to boil down to blood supply. Blood supply is really important for delivering growth factors and for your immune system getting in there and cleaning things up properly. Certain areas of the body, namely your face, where there's a lot a good blood supply, heal a lot better. Whereas your lower leg has a poor blood supply, notoriously difficult to get good healing on the lower leg. But some patients, due to underlying medical conditions, they're not going to have as robust blood supply. Maybe you have an underlying medical condition where you have poor circulation, that can influence healing. If you are a smoker, that is going to jeopardize healing. In fact, if you're a smoker and you're able to quit in advance of your surgery and stay off the cigarettes, at least for as long as possible while you're healing, that is going to get you better results because smoking uh, compromises blood supply severely, creates hypoxia in the area, really will ultimately negatively impact the final appearance of your scar if you are smoking. Another factor that's going to influence the final appearance of your scar is your age. And this is one case where being older is better in terms of you are less likely to heal with a thickened raised scar, likely because of more laxity in the area and the skin cells don't proliferate as robustly. Whereas very young children, they are a lot more prone to developing thickened hypertrophic scars because their skin is a lot more elastic, responds a lot more robustly in terms of proliferation, and they're growing in size, so there's a lot more tension being put across that wound. And ethnicity definitely plays a role in that people of African descent are genetically predisposed to forming a type of thickened scar called a keloid. If you have a keloid, say from an earring, the chances that you develop a keloid from a surgical operation are greater. So once you've made one, that tells us you are somebody who makes keloids and that's definitely something to bring up to the surgeon. It will definitely help in knowing in advance in terms of planning things and following you up after the procedure to make sure that you get the best outcome in terms of your final scar appearance. I wanna take a moment to emphasize that this video is meant for educational purposes to help you understand how 
Postoperative scars go about healing and the factors that can influence the final appearance of a scar and certain things that can be done proactively to influence the final appearance of a scar. However, I wanna emphasize this. When it comes to surgery, there are a lot of different factors that influence how a wound is, should be taken care of after an operation. So first and foremost, you've got to clarify this with the surgeon. They're the ones who are going to tell you exactly how to take care of the wound to get the best results. I obviously can't give generalizable information here because it's gonna vary a lot with your underlying medical history, body sight, other lifestyle factors. So discuss with them how you should go about taking care of your healing post-operative wound to get the best results. So in the first few days, follow directions. The doctor and the nurse nursing team should be able to educate you on how to take care of your post-operative wound. Now, after the surgeon closes up your skin, you can have some fluid exudate. And so the wound moisture is controlled with foam dressings that are often changed daily or every other day. Again, that's something to discuss with the surgeon how they want you to take care of it. They will typically advise you to clean the area with either saline or just plain tap water and to avoid any like antimicrobial washes, iodine, alcohol, as these things can actually be toxic to the cells that are trying to come into that area to heal up the wound. In the absence of signs of skin infection, aggressive antimicrobials are really not warranted. Again, though, that depends a lot on you and your background medical history. In some cases, you know, depending on the type of surgery you had, they may instruct you otherwise. Now, when we're talking about closing skin together, you will typically have sutures placed in the deeper layers, and then you'll have some placed on top. After anywhere from one to two weeks, you're gonna return to the doctor's office to have those top stitches removed. That's really important, they should come out. Uh, but you do have stitches underneath to reduce the tension on that wound. One week after your operation, the strength of your wound is only 3% of what it was prior to surgery. So it's pretty weak. Even though the skin looks like it's together underneath, much, much weaker. Now by about the third week, that will increase to 20%, and by about three months, you get about 80% of the strength there that you had prior to the excision. So you have to be really diligent in reminding yourself that this area, even though the skin on top is coming together, has come together and closed up, the skin underneath is still working to get strong. Depending on the body site where you had the surgery, once they take those top stitches out, they may use skin tape to reduce tension on the wound. So for example, if you had something removed from your shoulder, they may use tape to minimize tension. This is less likely going to be the case if you had a surgery somewhere in like a flexural area where you have more skin laxity. During these first few weeks, there are going to be some specific recommendations that your doctor will give you to get the best results ultimately. You wanna bear in mind that anything that increases tension on that wound is going to negatively impact the final appearance of your scar. So for example, if you had surgery, say on your face, one thing that a lot of surgeons will counsel their patients to limit is vigorous exercise. Anything that increases your heart rate is going to increase blood flow to your face. And you may think, oh, that's a good thing, right, for healing? Well, what happens is it creates swelling. That swelling of the tissues creates unnecessary tension, and that ultimately can impact the final appearance of your scar in a negative fashion. So you may be instructed to be really kind of sluggish in terms of your exercise, you know, don't work out vigorously, even going so far as to say, walk slowly, take frequent breaks, sit down, try and limit getting your heart rate up, which is almost the opposite of what doctors ever tell you. They're often telling you to do cardiovascular conditioning for your health, but in this case, you know, for improving the final appearance of the scar, you may be advised to limit exercise and try and you know, keep your heart rate from getting elevated too frequently so as to reduce tissue swelling and ultimately improve the final appearance of your scar. It's just a few weeks, you know, it's not your lifetime that you've gotta be sedentary. So it's not going to, you know, kill any of your fitness goals or anything like that. Um, and it's going to, you know, depending again on the, on the site, it can make a huge difference. Taking care of yourself during this time is also really important. Getting good rest is necessary for proper healing. 
uh, not getting run down, not uh, going on crash diets, making sure that you get good protein actually is really important for proper healing. Um, it's, you know, your body is going to be using those amino acids and things to build strong, healthy collagen. So if you're somebody who struggles to get in protein, you know, maybe talk to your doctor about that. Uh, you know, maybe they can, if necessary, refer you to someone to give you some counseling on things that you can tweak in your diet to get good protein in. It can make a difference in terms of the final healing process, especially depending on the body site where you have the surgery. Uh, protein is, is really important. Wouldn't be a Dr. Dre video without an emphasis on sun protection, but ultraviolet rays from the sun, including the UVA rays that come through window glass, they will delay healing. Uh, uh, UVA rays specifically, uh, they actually penetrate quite deeply and damage the collagen and, and things that are, are trying to come together to, to heal your skin. So you really need to protect the area from the sun, wearing a broad spectrum sunscreen. The sunscreen is also going to be moisturizing, which should reduce frictional forces on the skin. A lot of sunscreens have silicones in them that provide slip and hydration. That ultimately in and of itself can help. Uh, if you're going to be outdoors, make sure you are wearing sun protective clothing as well. But UV rays will also lead to hyperpigmentation that can be very stubborn. So make sure you're protecting the area from the sun and you know, you're not, God forbid, going in a tanning bed or anything like that, which you guys should know that you shouldn't do by this point. Speaking of silicone, once those sutures come out after week one or two, uh, silicone scar sheets and or silicone scar gel actually can help uh, to improve the final appearance of a scar. It works by decreasing frictional forces and keeping the skin hydrated. And ultimately that may help in just keeping the skin there flat and kind of controlling the way in which the skin heals together more properly. You wanna make sure that you're not drinking alcohol in excess, that can slow down healing. Make sure you go over the medications that you're taking with your surgeon because some medications can actually get in the way of healing. Likewise, if you take any dietary supplements or herbal supplements, you wanna clarify with your surgeon if it's okay to resume taking those during the healing time because they certainly can have an influence on the rate of healing. So definitely clarify those with them. There are a lot of factors that go into play with healing in terms of the cells that come in and, and things that are set up. But moving into the first three months, um, after you've kind of gotten out of this early window, that's really when a type of scar is gonna start to reveal itself. It's called a hypertrophic scar. This is a thickened raised scar. And I'll get in, if identified early, certain treatments can be started and ultimately that will help in improving the final appearance. So for example, if you notice that your skin is healing with this beefy redness, uh, thickened scar, definitely bring that to the attention of the surgeon because they may want you to come back sooner. They can start things like steroid injections to soften and flatten things out or certain laser treatments may be pursued that can help target the redness and minimize it as well as help with softening and remodeling. Uh, importantly though, a hypertrophic scar does not uh, expand beyond the wound margins. So it doesn't go outside of the wound. Now what can happen is that the um, wound can spread out, if, especially if it's under a lot of tension and it can widen. And so you may have a thick, widened hypertrophic scar, but it's still within the, in the original wound. That differs from a keloid, which we'll talk about a bit more in a moment, and that a keloid will extend beyond the margins of the wound. With a hypertrophic scar, typically it's going to appear very red within the first three to six months. And then after that, it actually starts to kind of flatten out a bit and the redness dies down. And that can take anywhere from a year to two years for it to flatten out more. They can improve on their own, and when they're treated, they don't often come back. Silicone gel sheets, uh, they can be used, and they definitely can improve the final appearance of a scar and reduce the chances of hypertrophic scar formation. But if it's on an area of the body where it's difficult to use the silicone scar sheet, you can actually use a silicone scar cream or gel 
And it's actually beneficial to spend some time, anywhere from five to 10 minutes, massaging it in. That action of massage is thought to ultimately improve the appearance of the scar as well. But the silicone helps with hydration and in reducing frictional forces on the skin that lead to that thickening response. If it looks as though you're forming a hypertrophic scar, steroid injections again may be offered. It's called intralesional catalog. And this can help not only flatten it because the steroid puts the brakes on that collagen production. So it'll help soften and flatten it. But a lot of times these hypertrophic scars, they're itchy and in some cases they're very painful. And the Kenalog injections, the steroid injections can help alleviate that discomfort. And as I mentioned earlier, certain lasers certainly can be helpful as well. In some cases, applying direct pressure to the hypertrophic scar can help. It's thought to uh, activate enzymes that chew up collagen and just kind of help limit the collagen production there. Unfortunately, it's pretty difficult to do this. You've got to have pressure greater than 34 millimeters of mercury, which is actually pretty uncomfortable. And you've got to wear it for at least 30 minutes a day for like three to 12 months to get improvement. And that just ends up not being very sustainable for many patients. Not only is it uncomfortable, but it's just, you know, difficult to keep up with. So a lot of patients are not able to comply with that. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video though, a big risk factor for a hypertrophic scar is actually poor planning on the part of the surgeon in terms of the orientation of the incision. So you can actually undergo scar revision. It's called a Z-plasty or a W-plasty. And ultimately that can get you to a place where you don't have that thickened raised scar anymore. But let's talk about keloids. Now keloids are more common in people of African descent. They're thought to be genetic. Uh, keloids differ from hypertrophic scars in that they will extend beyond the margin in a claw-like fashion. In fact, keloid, the term keli is Greek for crab claw. Uh, a keloid, unlike a hypertrophic scar, it actually behaves more like a non-cancerous tumor and that there seems to be a maybe a cell type in the keloid, a fibroblast that is just convinced it needs to make collagen all the time, even though the wound has reached a, you know, a good amount of tension. It just keeps plugging and chugging. Something activates it. Um, we're still learning a lot about the biology of keloids. In contrast to a hypertrophic scars, a keloid will actually uh, continue to grow into the remodeling phase of wound healing at six to 18 months. Whereas with a hypertrophic scar, they kind of stop growing after six months. Whereas keloids, they're not going to flatten out on their own. Keloids will go from red to brown and they remain thickened and raised. Now the silicone gels and the silicone scar sheets, they certainly can be helpful for keloids, but they're not as effective as they are for hypertrophic scars. The mainstay for keloids is going to be those intralesional steroid shots into the keloid that will help soften and flatten them and like hypertrophic scars keloids definitely can itch they definitely can be painful and the steroid injections will certainly help with that however unlike a hypertrophic scar a keloid will often come back after you have stopped the steroid injections so they require ongoing management there are a variety of other treatments that are tried out for keloids some of them work well uh, kind of depends on the patient and the location but things like uh, certain chemotherapy medications actually can be injected into the keloid. Unlike with a hypertrophic scar, the physical pressure seems to be less effective. However, with one exception, uh, if you are someone who has ever made a keloid from an ear piercing, the keloid uh, can be excised and then to prevent another keloid from coming back after cutting out the first one They sell these magnetic pressure earrings. Those can actually help in minimizing the chances the keloids come back Also radiation therapy to a keloid can help uh, when combined with excision So cutting this cutting the keloid out and then radiating it But radiation therapy does come with an increased risk of uh, skin cancer So it's definitely something that you know, is not gonna be right for everybody all right, you guys, so that's a bit of education about wound healing and the factors that influence the final appearance of a scar after surgery. I hope this was educational. Take home point when it comes to the best results, tension is key. Anything that can be done to minimize tension can improve the final appearance of a scar. Of course, there's not a one size fits all approach. So second and most important take home point is listen to your doctor. I can't tell you how to get the best results 
in terms of what to expect after your surgery. Only your doctor can do that. They know you, they know your medical history. And so listen to them, follow their instructions. And if you have questions about their instructions, ask them. Uh, they are the ones who know you the most and they know the details of what they are going to be doing to you and what they have done to you the most. So ask them. Now on the end slate, I'm going to link my recent video on eight questions to ask before a cosmetic procedure. So if you are thinking of having some sort of cosmetic surgery, definitely check that out so you are well-versed uh, before going in for maybe a consultation. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.